What's up guys, Lifting here. Today I have the honor of having Paleo Gamer, one of the guys from poelab.com with me for a talk about the basics of how to get started with Uber Lab early on in the league. In a couple of days I have PoE Lab himself and Suit Science in for a more detailed talk about how to navigate the lab, what one can expect from doing labs and just tips on how to get or to make it more approachable. But in this video we're going to focus on the basics so you can get started yourself and enjoy the vast amount of currency there is to gain by doing this sort of uh, content. And that is a long intro. Paleo, how are you doing? Are you ready to give uh, people some tips so they can get started with the lab? Hi, I'm great. I can't wait. I'm excited. Awesome, dude. So first of all, how do you recommend people to approach uh, the lab thing right from the beginning of the league, uh, Paleo? Well, for what I like to do is I like to level as quick as possible because the faster that you get there, uh, to the Uber Lab specifically, uh, the more profitable it will be. Uh, so level quickly and get to those trials. Mm -hmm. It should probably be said, though, that you don't necessarily have to get to Uber Lab within the first week. It will remain profitable for a very long time into the league. But as Paleo says, it's insanely profitable if you go there uh, fast. What if people are having trouble finding the Uber Lab trials, then you can't get in? What do you suggest people to do then, uh, Helio? Yeah, a lot of times people are frustrated because they can't find those trials. Uh, there's six trials that you have to unlock before you even get to Uber Lab itself. Um, a lot of people don't know about Global 820. Um, you can go into that channel and ask uh, sp for specific trials that you have. Uh, the good thing to do is write down what trials you haven't done uh, so you have an idea of what you're looking for, and then you can cross out the ones that you don't have, uh, and it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, that's a great tip because there's no other way, unless you find the trials, you can you can click on that plug and see what you're what you're missing. But other than that, you can't see what you're missing. So write it down. That's a really good uh, idea. Yeah, and there's uh, also a uh, um, a prophecy uh, that unlocks hmm. trials as well. Well, it 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 puts a trial into the next map that you run. Um, it doesn't always proc, so you have to vary what maps you're running. It's called the Dreams Trial, and uh, it's typically only a couple casts. So definitely look for those as well if you're having difficulties. Yeah, and one thing thing to consider here is that even or you know, if these things goes for a couple of casts, sometimes the offerings you might actually get from the map when you complete it, those sometimes sell for or chaos uh, so you may even be able to make some profit from doing this but of course it takes some time investment and on that note in order to efficiently farm uber Lab, at least if you're doing it for profit one cannot just rely on the offerings you find uh, every now and then in the maps instead you'll have to stock up by buying them on poe trade P or paleo what's in your opinion an appropriate amount to pay per offering uh, the beginning of the league, it's actually really, really nice if you can um, get a, you know, a decent bit of chaos pulled up because they go really cheap or some two, two to three chaos. But I would never really pay more than like five chaos. Uh, those prices might be when the lab is really, really good that day. Uh, but you'll pretty much never lose money if you spend less than five chaos. It's pretty hard. And this is a question I get a lot, uh, Paleo. So while there isn't an easy answer to this necessarily, could you tell us what you consider like a, a good baseline requirement in terms of how much health energy shield and potentially other mitigation forms that are required to begin Uber Lab farming so you can do it comfortably. Yeah, what I try to shoot for, uh, if I'm playing like a life build from the get-go, I try to shoot for like 5,500 life is like a bare minimum. If you're like 5,400, sure, that's fine. Uh, have enough leech uh, for mana and, and uh, life because there's no way to really refill flasks. And then speaking of flasks, Stib Knight and Basalt are very, very strong against them. The blind and the flat mitigation are great. Um, and then as far as energy shield, I like a minimum of like 9,000, uh, enough leech again to sustain life and mana and same flasks, Stim Light and Basalt, they're super, super strong, especially as energy shield because you get flask effectiveness. Yeah, and absolutely. then for both of them, uh, defensive curses, uh, are really, really good, like in feeble time chains. Uh, and then you also have defensive auras such as grace and Arctic armor and Arctic armor is a savior. Uh, the chilled ground that you lay down, if you just run through him, attack, and have, you know, maintain that chilled ground underneath him, it doesn't have any uh, diminishing returns like a curse does on bosses, so it's very, very strong. And then the last thing would be uh, cast one damage taken setup. It's massive as well, it's, it, or helps prevent one threats, I guess. So could you give us a few examples of good skills or builds that performs well for Uberlap uh, farming, in your opinion? Yeah, there's uh, there's two that really um, shine. Uh, if you're playing hardcore, I would say like a, a Juggernaut Earthquake character, 
Uh, it allows you to do pretty much every phase, and it's very forgiving because of how tanky the Juggernaut is. It is a little slow, but it's very safe. Uh, as that's for like a life-based build. For energy shield, uh, anything occultist is really, really good, but a specific skill uh, would be essence drain is very, very strong in the beginning. I used the cyclone last week, a cyclone slayer, and slayer in general is, in my opinion, a really good uh, ascendancy too, as it gives you that 20% call and it gives you some leech. But the Juggernaut seems to be the safer choice um, if one cares about that. So if you're in hardcore, that may be better. Yeah, I agree. There's a, there's a quick little like uh, trick that you can do with the Slayer. You can use the Writhing Jar uh, and, and spawn the little worms. And then the Overleech, when you kill those worms, uh, since your Slayer continues to leech the whole time, it really is really, yeah. really good when you're preparing to fight Azaro. When, like the very first beginning, he tends to kind of do burst damage and that Overleech really helps. Yeah, and against traps too, it just makes it so much easier. Oh, it also gives you time to get endurance charges up as well. You can do enduring cry and get endurance charges prior to the fight. Oh, and guys, I've added a few build suggestions for Uberlab farming. You can check them out. They are in the description of the video. They work great to get you started. So uh, about poelab.com, this is a website you guys are running to help people get through the lab easier and in a more like time efficient manner. Could you tell us in brief uh, how this website works and how people should approach this resource of uh, information? Yeah, every day um, the lab resets, uh, you know, at a set time, and we've got a group of people that uh, are are dedicated to running these these labs every day. We run every single difficulty. Uh, we take a screenshot of the the labyrinth itself, and then we label everything that's crucial: uh, what weapons he's wielding, what phases there are, uh, if there's any you know special things in the lab that you should you should look for or grab. Uh, so it's a very good resource to go and 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 every single day it's posted within an hour of the reset uh, like clockwork mm -hmm. yeah i use it every time i uh, farm uh, the lab it saves me a ton of time but we will be going more into detail about how to read the layout tips for isaro uh, the boss fight etc in the video with the poe lab and suit size so don't worry if you feel like you would like more information about that guys we're gonna go more into that but so to recap paleo and correct me if i'm wrong here what you recommend, and I agree with uh, this here, try to start farming Uberlab as fast as possible for maximum profit. Use global 820 chat to unlock the Uber trials if you haven't found them yourself. In order to efficiently farm Uberlab, you'll have to buy trials from other people on PoE trade. Just don't pay too much. Try to stay below 5 chaos, but it's great if you can pay 2 or 3. Then try to have a minimum of at least 5,500 life or 9,000 energy shield together with the various flasks and curses and other defenses uh, Paleo recommended here. Use PoeLab.com to easily navigate the lab to save yourself some time and frustration. And finally, make sure to check out uh, the next video I release in a couple of days for general boss and layout tips together with suit size and uh, PoE Lab. Yeah, do you have anything you want to say here near the uh, end, uh, Paleo? Thanks for having me, and I hope this really helps you guys get into the labyrinth. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask uh, Lifting. He's he's definitely you know more than capable to answer those questions or stop by my stream as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Also, make sure to check out the podcast PoE Talk hosted by Paleo Gamer and uh, PoE Lab hosted on uh, Paleo Gamer's channel. It's pretty awesome. And I personally will be present in one of those podcasts within too long, and I'm looking forward to that. Thank you for watching, and bros, do you even nerd?